Hello, everyone. I am continuing on the theme that we started on turning 60. For women who've just turned 60 or who are looking at 60 right around the corner or who are looking back on 60. And the theme of this little talk is hair. What an odd theme, you might say. What, what is this? Uh, why would anyone want to talk about hair? Well, I actually find that hair is a really interesting subject for us women, we women of this, uh, this generation, of all uh, uh, generations, the way that consciousness uh, is working here on planet Earth. And there are a lot of different thought forms out there around hair. So you can see that my hair is uh, rather long. And it is not being colored anymore. So it's becoming noticeably gray. And actually, in this area where I live, Belton, California, it's quite acceptable uh, to look like I look. And there are many, I see my sisters, uh, I see myself uh, all over town, everywhere I go around here. But this is not true in the general of America and of the United States. So what are some of the experiences that you yourself um, might be having around this wonderful topic of hair? So. For me, it happened uh, several years ago that I was visiting uh, in the Midwest, Chicago suburbs where I grew up. I was visiting my sister Barbara in, in my old hometown, which is a very strict place as far as how one must look and dress, and, and the rules are very closely uh, prescribed. And after my visit, my sister mentioned to me that a very, her very good friend had said to her, made a comment, your sister shouldn't wear her hair that long. She should not have her hair that long at her age. And my sister was rather shocked by this because she dearly loves this friend and it kind of set her back. And she mentioned it to me out of her thoughts on how to take that and she was angry but I don't think I think she just let it go we talked it through and said you know people are going to think what they think and they have their opinions and that just shows you what is the thought form that exists in your community which is this person and most uh, of that age group have very short hair so after a certain age I'm not sure what that age is maybe it's 50 uh, you, you must have your hair very short and look a certain way. So, right off, if you're going to have your hair long, you're going to get comments. All right. So, just this last year, I was visiting, got together with uh, relations again in my hometown, and my brother was there. My older brother, he's a year older, and he continued to drop these remarks about Betsy, they call her Betsy, her hair. She needs to do something about her hair. My brother made this very clear. And even though I didn't want to feel anything, because I feel I'm very solid in my understanding for, of myself and who I am, I felt a jab, I felt a stab as if being stabbed in the heart because it was my brother saying it. And he, it means so much to me, someone I love so dearly. And it also harkened back to my mother, um, who was very concerned about hair all of our lives. And every time I would come home, well, she never liked it, even when I was coloring it, probably it was too long, too wild, I'm not sure. But when I would see my mother, I could see her look. She'd have this sort of evaluating look, scowling look when she'd see me. And 
she would mention something about about the hair and that things needed to be changed, something needed to be changed in order to satisfy her. Again, just a couple of weeks ago, I was traveling home from Florida and I was in the airport of Dallas-Fort Worth and I was sitting in a Chili's restaurant having something to eat and at these narrow tables and there was another table just beyond mine and this man and woman and they're probably she's probably around my age and he's probably somewhat older and they had been waiting for a table outside at the same time that I was and I was seated before them and then they were seated right here uh, near me so I know that they saw me as I saw them and at one point, so I'm eating my dinner, and, and I hear the woman say to the fellow, and they look like academics, they look like professors of the university or something along those lines. Now I've worked for universities all of my life, so they are of my ilk, if you, if you would say that. And I hear her say to this fellow, not sure what their relationship was. Am I too old to have my hair this long? Now hers was about just a little bit by her shoulders. And he made some comment to her of, oh well, it, it looks fine on you. And I, because I'm psychic, I read the things, I, I knew that that comment was in a way, strange way, directed at me, toward me, because I didn't look right. And it was said loud enough so that I could hear it. All right, so what of these experiences? What are the lessons that are coming to you at this point in your life? The lessons are this, that who about what someone's hair looks like. Let us right now free ourselves of these ridiculous judgments and thought forms. You are at this place in your life where you have gained your freedom and you have gained it at a huge sacrifice and huge cost through many lifetimes that you have suffered and struggled and in this lifetime where you have been subjugated and you have been judged and you have been told how you have to dress and you have been told how you have to look and it's time to know that no one can tell you how to look how to dress how to be and to recognize with compassion for these others who speak these thought forms that it is not them speaking they are simply tied into the matrix they are tied in to the collective thought form of keeping us in oppression then that means every one of us in oppression the oppression of the past the oppression of how things are supposed to be it may appear that we have much more freedom in this country, we as women, than in anywhere else in the world. And that is true. But I'm just sympathizing with you that it's not an easy walk. It is our true emancipation because at this point in our lives, we don't have to listen we don't have to take in that energetic vibration of judgment, that critique from anyone. And I'm also inviting you to really become aware and cleanse all of those thought forms within yourself and to cleanse within yourself that very tendency of wanting to critique and put a judgment on everything that you see everything that you experience 
That is how this mind is trained to operate. And if you've studied at all A Course in Miracles, if you've studied the literature, the teachings, are all geared toward becoming free of judging, judging another. When you judge another, you judge yourself. It is judging oneself. So in that sense, we can have compassion for these others who are not at the place yet that we are. And know that when we are the way showers, when we're the ones who are stepping out, even if it's in something as ridiculous as hair, or how I wear my hair, how I dress, to know that we are with one another, that there is a sisterhood where we support and embrace one another. Energetically, we are connected and we are connected in this walk, in our strength, and in stepping out in our uniqueness. This is the biggest message that's going to come across to you in these talks on 60, is be yourself. Be your unique persona that you are in this lifetime. That is what, that is the most important thing that you can do is dedicate yourself to being the most outrageous version of you that can possibly be and step out bravely and boldly even with your sensitivity even with that residual within you wanting to be the good girl wanting everyone to like you wanting everyone to approve of you it's all right it's all right we're together we're stepping out we're stepping out to lead this consciousness. And so, blessings to all of you, blessings to your hair, to your, how you dress, to having the thoughts that you have, to teaching freedom, God's blessings, divine's blessings to each and every one of you, and let your hair go wild and free.